From Hollywood, the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production The Ghost Breakers, Director George Marshall, Star Bob Hope. The Hollywood Screen Directors present a comedy of terrors, The Ghost Breakers, starring Bob Hope in his original role and introducing the director of the film, George Marshall. Our guest screen director tonight might be said to have some small knowledge of motion pictures. He's been an extra, stunt man, prop boy, actor, film editor, cameraman, and assistant director. (laughs) And 34 years ago, he launched his brilliant career as a director of some 385 films. We proudly present the president of the Screen Directors Guild and the director of such fine entertainment as Tap Roots, The Perils of Pauline, Destry Rides Again, and tonight's story, The Ghost Breakers. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Marshall. Uh, thank you very much. When we made The Ghost Breakers, the set bore a pretty close resemblance to a case of galloping nightmares. Including, included in our chamber of horrors were such things as ghosts, bats, zombies, witches, and Bob Hope. <laughs> which you can imagine is probably one of the screwiest parlays on record. And here's the result. On the air for the first time, The Ghost Breakers, starring Bob Hope as Larry Lawrence and Shirley Mitchell as Mary Carter. If ever a name struck terror into the heart of the underworld, it's the name of Larry Lawrence, intrepid radio reporter and crime buster. Yet only his closest friends know that behind his simple, vacant, foolish smile hides the real Larry Lawrence, simple, vacant, and foolish. (laughs) We find him now in his office preparing a last thrill-loaded broadcast before leaving on his vacation. Oh, so you clam up on Larry Lawrence, huh? Come on, open up. Open up, I say, or I'll drill a hole clear through you. (laughs) Okay, you asked for it. Take this. And this. And this. Is there something wrong, Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, I can't get this window open. (laughs) Here, let me try. It's no use, Miss Coles. It's stuck. I'm a strong man, but... There you are. Miss Coles, I thought I warned you about weightlifting on office hours. (laughs) There's a Miss Mary Carter to see you, Mr. Lawrence. Miss Carter? Is she a redhead or are you wasting my time? You know, I'm due on the air in 15 minutes and I'm waiting for Raspy Kelly. Well, she says it's very important, Mr. Lawrence. And she's a blonde. Oh, then put her in category 7B. I'll see her when I get back from my vacation. And tell her to leave her telephone number and waist measurement. Mr. Lawrence, please. Please, I'm Mary Carter. I'm sorry, miss, but I'm working on my secret invention. For real invention? Yep, it's a bottle preparation for women who want to get their face lifted. How does it work? I mix nitroglycerin with cold cream. (laughs) That just goes to show how tough a woman has to be when she deals with Larry Lawrence. Oh, then you're really Larry Lawrence. The brave, strong, dashing Larry Lawrence I've always heard about. Well, what are you waiting for, Miss Coles? Go somewhere and flex your muscles. (laughs) And tell me when Raspy Kelly comes in. Yes, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence, I need your help. Ah, yes, don't you all. Poor girl. But I'm dated up for the next month, perhaps someday in May, around apple blossom time. You don't understand. Mr. Lawrence, you're famous as a crime breaker and gang breaker. And there was that wonderful week in Duluth when I was a home breaker. (laughs) Now I want to purchase your services. I want you to become a ghost breaker. Ghost breaker? I'm sorry, but the only spirits I mess around with come equipped with olives, not shrouds. I'm serious, Mr. Lawrence. I've inherited an island off the coast of Cuba, Black Island, and there's a castle on it called Castillo Maldito. Oh, sure, I've heard of that. Isn't that where Cougat raises little maracas? (laughs) 
Now, Miss Carter, you're not going to tell me that castle is haunted. Well, this afternoon, the deed was turned over to me by a Senor Parada. He told me that no one who ever eats dinner in the castle ever lives until breakfast. You mean there's no post-toasties because of the ghosties? a ghost. Senor Parada says it's the ghost of Don Santiago, my great-great-grandfather. That's why I'm afraid, Mr. Lawrence. Now, if you'll come with me to Castillo Maldito, I'll see that your time is well paid for. Yeah, but why let a few ghost rumors frighten you? After all, what's a ghost? Just a Ku Klux that's lost his clan. <laughs> what do you need me for? Here, I received this card in the mail today. Let's see. Death waits for you at Black Island. Well, here's your card, Miss Carter. Thank you and good night. You mean you're afraid? You, Larry Lawrence? Afraid? Me? Listen, I'm one of the bravest gum shoes in the business. Well, you're acting like a child. Okay, so I'm one of the bravest bubble gum shoes in the business. <laughs> it's just that I don't like spirits to send fan mail. And besides, tomorrow I'll be in the mountains, so take your ghost postage to somebody else. Ah, oh, that mountain air, that's the life. You go to the window at six o'clock in the morning, open it, climb in, and go to bed. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Kelly is here, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, fine. I'll see him right away. Miss Carter, hmm? if you want an expert in things that go boo, 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 I've got a friend named Crosby. Why don't you see him? No one else will do, Mr. Lawrence. I'm sailing for Cuba tonight on the Rexitania. If you change your mind, I'll be waiting for you in my stateroom. Are you, Larry? What do you say? Well, hello, Raspy. Say, you sound better. Did you get the frog in your throat a fresh lily pad? <laughs> I got another Frenchy Dupal story for you. It's a killer. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, and so is Frenchy Duval. Say, does he know you're giving me these stories? Sure, he loves it. Good publicity. I know. I plug him or he plugs me. What have you got? Frenchy has himself a new racket. Here's how it works. <laughs> And now, folks, here's a last-minute scoop. Frenchie Duval has a nice new racket, baby laundries. You know the kind I mean with a slogan. This is the little one's laundry mat. Frenchie discovered that there were about 2,000 of them in the state all making money. Without even telling his closest pals, he moved in and three-cornered the market. And so today, Frenchie is really cleaning up the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> this is Larry Lawrence saying good night. Larry Lawrence will return to the air two weeks from tonight with more lowdown on the underworld. Now, a word about Cronin's coffee. Well, that's that. Hmm. One more week on the air without a rest, and I'd begin to look like Bob Hope. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence. Oh, hello, Miss Cole. Did you hear the broadcast? Wasn't I great? Wasn't I terrific? Uh, Frenchie Duval is on the phone. Wasn't I just leaving? <laughs> Wonder if he's sore. Courage, Camille. Hello, Frenchie. What's new? Got a tip for you, Larry boy. Shoot. <laughs> I had to open my big mouth <laughs> What was that? That was Raspy Kelly saying goodbye Raspy Kelly? But you're not mad at me, are you, Frenchie? Oh, no, no, no I told you, I got a tip for you Here, get this A sight and radio reporter was found in a ditch Riddled with bullets Yeah? When did it happen? Probably tomorrow. <laughs> wow, that's what I call hot news. Tell me, hey, Frenchie. Oh, not me, not little old Larry. I'm gonna put somebody on the spot, boy. <laughs> Miss Coles, hand me that bottle of spot remover. Hey, Lawrence, I'm taking care of myself, personally. Oh, Frenchie. Frenchie boy, speak to me. Hello, Mort. <laughs> Come to think of it, hello, mortician <laughs> Why did I bother paying this year's income tax? Where are you going? Cuba Miss Coles, when it comes to ghosts, I'd rather see one than be one Oh, Larry, I'm so glad you decided to come Some stateroom you got on the ship you ought to see mine. It's so far down, I can use a propeller to whip up my shaving cream. <laughs> Say, did you see President Truman in swimming when we passed Key West? No. Which one was he? The one in evening clothes. <laughs> yes? 
radiogram for you, miss. And there's one for Mr. Lawrence, too. Oh, thank you, Stuart. Well, who'd know I was aboard? Oh, here's your telegram. Well, isn't that nice? Mine must be from the Cuban Chamber of Commerce. What does it say? See Cuba and die. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It's signed Frenchie Duval. Stop the ship, man. Overboard. Stop the ship. Guzzle the mainsail. Box the cop. Larry. Larry, please. What? Larry, look at my telegram. What are you excited about? It just says, an empty coffin waits on Black Island. Gee, does Pierce Brothers know about this? <laughs> you think we should make the one friendly call that covers all? <laughs> I'm scared. And a sign, Senor Mertes. Muerte. In Spanish, that means death. I know. I know his brother, Rigor Mortis. <laughs> you poor kid, you really are in trouble, aren't you? I'd be in a lot more trouble without you to help me. Yeah, I'm brave. Two-gun Larry Lawrence. When I find out who's threatening you, I'll break him in two and use half in the castle and half in the bathroom. <laughs> sure, that's me. Courage on the loose. Only it isn't so. What do you mean, Larry? I'm running away from myself, from some gangsters in New York. Oh, I didn't know. Look, Mary, we're both in trouble. Let's play it together, huh? Mm. You stick by me, and I'll stick by me, too. <laughs> Seriously, Mary, I... You know, you're beautiful. I'm frightened. Hello? Hello? This is Senor Parada. Mary, it's Parada, the guy you were telling me about. Who is this speaking? Never mind about me. What's the idea of scaring Miss Carter with all that ghost stuff? Ghost? I'm sorry. I must have the wrong stateroom. Hello. Hello. Hello, Senor Parada. Parada? Well, that's strange. I wonder why he's on board. Yes? Oh, I noticed Miss Carter's name on the passenger list. Is she here? Why, yes. I'm Miss Carter. Who are you? Why, you're... That's right. Jeff Montgomery. May I come in? Oh, please do. We met at the store club a few weeks ago. Yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Montgomery, this is Mr. Lawrence. You traveling to Cuba, Mr. Montgomery? Yes, my home's in Havana. Oh, we're going to Havana, too. And then on to Castillo Maldito on Black Island. Say, I'd heard that jinx was wished off on... Not you. Yeah, we won two glorious weeks there on Ladies Be Seated. (laughs) 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 Mr. Carter... Carter, that that place is evil. There's the legends about the ghosts, and there's said to be a zombie on the island, the son of the native woman who looks after the place. Zombie? Yes. Some voodoo priests seem to have the power to bring the dead back to life. You see them once in a while, walking around with despondent, hopeless, staring eyes. You mean like Republicans? (laughs) Please be careful, Miss Carter. If you insist on going to Black Island, be sure you go well protected. Well, what do I look like, an egg beater? There's nothing on that island but ghosts, evil spirits, and zombies. Ghosts, evil spirits, and zombies. When's the next boat back to New York? But what about Frenchie Duval? Him. He's just trying to kill me, that's all. Between Black Island and Frenchie Duval, I'll take... Yes, Larry. Uh, I'll take... Darling. Black Island, here I come. <laughs> You are listening to the Hollywood Screen Director's presentation of The Ghost Breakers, starring Bob Hope with Shirley Mitchell, and introducing the director of the film, George Marshall. Black Island, its silhouette broken by the menacing outline of Castillo Maldito against the night sky. And approaching the island, a small rowboat carrying Larry Lawrence and Mary Carter. Boy, no wonder the native boatman won't come here at night. Look at the place. What a ruin. Looks like CBS pulled a raid on it. (laughs) Just a few more strokes, Larry. We're almost there. I've been hauling on these oars so long that my blisters are forming pyramid clubs. (laughs) Here's the dock. Here. Let me help you out. Oh, thanks. There. There. Lafayette, we are here. (laughs) I think Lafayette's here, too. It's probably the old woman caretaker that Jeff told us about. She may be just trying to scare us. She's wasting her time. We're scared already. Uh Uh-oh. There she is, Mother Zombie. The moon! The moon has risen! 
My son is walking. The zombie walks. Taxi strike, huh? <laughs> Go away. Go away, your zombie get you. What you want? Could we interest you in a subscription to Weird Stories magazine? <laughs> Island now. I've inherited the Castle Maldito. No. My island. Sounds like a Roman Rose mother. <laughs> Gee, great night for a murder. Who told you? Oh, I just... Huh? I thought I was going to get the laugh. You know? <laughs> you, um, you look for other men. What? <laughs> one man, one man come in big plane. Other men come in boats. Two boats. Tell me, does the Greyhound bus make a rest stop here? <laughs> Give my regards to Boris Karloff. <laughs> Come on. Let's get into the castle. Hand me the flashlight, Mary. Mm. There. Oh, golly, what a place. I wonder who lived here last. Must have been Jolson. The front porch is down on his knees. <laughs> Larry. Larry, look over there. Turn your flashlight to the left. A suitcase. Hmm. It's almost new. One of the people who came to the island must have left it here. Let's see the initials. F.D. Frenchy Duval. Frenchy, come on. Let's get out of here. Lawrence, stop. I'll shoot. There he is. Put out the light. Okay, here, behind this post. Thought you'd get away from Frenchie Duval, did you? Where are you, Lawrence? Come out. I'm not here. I'm over there. Let's go. Here, in this room. Well, now we know who one of our guests was. What about the other two, huh? Yes. Uh... I don't know, but I think I could spit and hit one of them. Oh, it's just the wind. If it is, it's the first time I ever heard a breeze with adenoids. <laughs> you strangers, I kill strangers. Oh, Larry, it's the zombie. It's the living dead. I never saw anything like it. You never played Philadelphia. <laughs> strangers. Die! Hey, strangers, that's us. Zombie, kill! Sorry, but I gotta see your union card. Oh! oh. Larry, you stunned him with your flashlight. Uh... <laughs> Help me drag him into the closet. Okay. And you told me you were a coward. Yeah, what do you know? I'm brave. <laughs> hey, Zom. Everything okay? What did he say? He said, with men who know their castles best, it's zombies, two to one. <laughs> Come on, let's see what else is going on in Nightmare Alley. This is a short interlude of organ music. Let's switch to another station. Come on, Larry. Let's find out who's playing that organ. The organ. There it is. Yeah, and those things around it are either coffins or boxes of king-size Cuban cigars. Nobody here now. Wonder who was playing it. itself. 
I don't like it. Petrillo won't like it either. <laughs> Maybe somebody put a nickel in it. There's no one there. Why, that's that's ridiculous. Only a ghost could do that, and there's no such thing. If there really are ghosts, I'd I'd lose my mind. I'd end up in the snake pit. <laughs> Move over, Olivia. <laughs> hey, huh? do you see what I see? On the organ bench. It, it's coming out of thin air. Too many reducing tablets. <laughs> Larry, it's a ghost. Man, marching man, find the key and marching man. Maybe they're drafting again. <laughs> What's he talking about? I don't know. Ask him. You ask him. I feel too ghastly to be ghostly. Marching men. The key is marching men. Look, it's getting up. And floating toward that empty coffin. It's getting in. Gee, that ghost gave some performance. Yeah? Well, wait till you see me in Hamlet. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to find out what's really in that box. Look, on the side, there's a plate. Why, it's the coffin of Don Santiago, my ancestor who built the castle. Let's get the lid up. Uh, Larry, there's nothing but a skeleton. Yeah, old man Moe sure is dead. Larry, I think he was trying to tell me something. Something about the marching men. He wants me to look for something. Look, if he forgot anything when he left, there's no sense looking for it now. Let's go. Don't forget that Frenchie Duval is looking for us, and there's two other characters around somewhere. Larry, t turn your flashlight over there, above the organ. Isn't that an inscription? Can you make it out? I think... Yes, let me see. God's treasures in abundance lie. Something heavenly key. Heavenly key before they die. There's more to this than meets the eye. The ghost. It said something about a key, Larry. How can we look for a key? We haven't even got a keyhole. Well, keys... <laughs> Keys could mean music. Look, let's keep moving around. If we stay in one spot, we're dead. Dead. I wonder who thought up that expression. <laughs> the marching men must have something to do with it. We'll ask him on the 4th of July. Come on. Larry, there, on the wall. Aren't those marching men? Those little figures carved into the stone? Mm. Now, if I draw a horizontal line through this marching man, and one parallel to it through this one, and another one, and two more... This is a fine time to start playing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> No, don't you see? It becomes a bar of music. That's what the ghost was trying to tell us. The key is a chord on this organ. Mary, keep playing. Look, down Santiago's coffin. It's shifting off its base. And I don't feel so good myself. Keep playing. Higher, higher. That's enough. Look. It's a secret opening. Yeah. With a flight of stairs. There's nothing down there but some dusty old dungeons. Let Jack Benny keep his money. Come on. <laughs> Larry, you go first. Okay. But remember, I'm leadoff man on the way back. <laughs> Say, there's a lantern down here. Yes, and railroad tracks, like in a mine. Yeah, railroad tracks. It reminds me of my hotel room in Scranton. <laughs> Come on, keep going. Look out, you'll trip over that rail. Oh. oh, oh, did you hurt yourself? What did you land on? This is a comedy. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Mary, look at this. What is it? I've seen this stuff before. Silver ore, the real thing. Mary, you're rich. Congratulations, Miss Carter. Senor Parada. So you're Parada. What's the gun for? You can't get away with it. I'll shoot. Now listen, Parada. No, not you. Behind you. Look out! Larry, it's Jeff. Jeff Montgomery. Yes, it's Jeff. It's too bad I had to wound you, Parada, but you'll soon be put out of your misery. Miss Carter, I came here to warn you. He's mad. Insane. Against the wall. All three of you. I warned you, Mary. But you chose to ignore my messages. What's this all about? About a vein of silver as wide as the island. I discovered it. And it's mine. You hear? This mine is mine. And what's mine stays mine. Thank you, Gertrude Stein. <laughs> okay, so it's yours. But let Mary go. No. Nobody's going to carry any tales out of here. All right, come on out of there. I got your bottle up. Come on. Who's that? Frenchie Duval. 
It's the police. They've got you trapped, Montgomery. They'll never get me. Not now. This is mine. They'll have to shoot it out. You tell them, kid. Get through. Finish. Never. Never. Oh, Larry, they've killed each other. Frenchie and Jeff. I'll match you to see who faints first. <laughs> oh, Larry. Move over. Stop hogging the floor. And a fond farewell to Cuba. We leave your castle to Mother Zombie and her bouncing baby boy. Yes. And with Parada taking care of the mine, we'll never have to come back. And now that I'm rich, I'm going to back you in a television show. Yeah, after all those ghosts, it'd be nice to try out a new medium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what in the world will we do with a hundred million dollars? What, honey? What will we do with a hundred million dollars? Well, we can always open another hotel in Texas. <laughs> Get Dorothy Lamour to broadcast. <laughs> Larry, I still don't understand about the ghost. It must have been real. No, honey, it was just one of Montgomery's tricks. There's no such things as ghosts. <laughs> Why didn't we have her sit in the audience? <laughs> Next week, the NBC Theater brings you a motion picture romance set against the background of memorable music. The story is Music for Millions, and our star will be June Allison. Oh. And now here again is tonight's star, Bob Hope and screen director George Marshall. Tell me. Tell me, Georgie boy, uh -huh. you, you used to be a fast man with a set of golf clubs. Do you still linger on the links? Sorry, Bob, I don't have time to give lessons. Why don't you buy a good book on the game? Buy one? I wrote one last week in my life's blood on the sixth hole at Palm Springs. There I was, see, George, a four-iron shot from the green. I was standing like You're this. You're standing wrong. Get this, kid, always a director. <laughs> I'm standing wrong. Who taught you how to play golf, Bobby Jones? That's right, he did. Who taught you? Some little Scotch caddy called Crosby. <laughs> But I don't play with him anymore. Why not? Why not? Would you play with a fellow who puts grease on your putter, cheats on his scorecard by making his nines upside down, builds a furrow on the green with an electric shaver so that the ball has to roll into the cup? For no. Well, neither will he. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Bob. Thanks for that. Good night, folks. Good night, Bob Hope and George Marshall. The Ghostbreakers was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, currently releasing Alias Nick Beal, starring Ray Milland, Audrey Totter, and Thomas Mitchell. Bob Hope will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Sorrowful Jones, with Lucille Ball and Mary Jane Saunders. George Marshall's next Paramount release will be My Friend Irma, starring John Lund, Marie Wilson, and Diana Lynn, and NBC's own Dee Martin and Jerry Lewis. Included in tonight's cast were Shirley Mitchell, Donald Morrison, Sheldon Leonard, Jack Edwards, June Foray, Ken Christie, Betty Moran, and Dan Riss. The Ghostbreakers was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Ray Dietrich. Your announcer has been Frank Barton. Listen again next week when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production, Music for Millions, Director Henry Coster, Star June Allison... The NBC Theater came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.